Hi guys, welcome to the first video lecture of the semester. Um, we're doing this lecture in class together so that we can model what needs to be done when you're at home. Every time that you have a video lecture assigned in class, you will also be given um, some handout that you need to fill in while you're watching the video. And so as you're watching this video, make sure that you fill in the blanks on the handout that you were given. And if you have any questions, just jot them down and we can discuss it when, um, we ha when the video is over. Um, what we're going to talk about today is Earth and its position in space and how its motion affects Earth's seasons. A lot of this is going to seem um, very elementary to you, and it's just really a revision of things that you should have learned a while back but maybe have forgotten. Um, and it's going to be important when we talk about uh, the climate and um, how people interact with their environment. Okay, so let's get started. First thing that we need to know is that people once thought the Earth was actually flat. Um, eventually, we figured out that it's actually a sphere. We also know that Earth is part of a solar system, and it is the third planet from the Sun. There's a total of nine planets, and they all revolve around the Sun. That revolution is called an orbit. The Earth's orbit is the curved path that it follows as it travels around the Sun. People once believed that everything traveled around the Earth. Eventually, we figured out that that's not true and that we know that the Earth is actually moving and it both rotates and revolves around the Sun along with the other planets. The spinning of the Earth on its axis is what actually causes day and night, and that is called a rotation. A full rotation takes a full day, sun up to sun down. The motion of the Earth around the Sun, that revolution, takes about 365 and a quarter days. It's one year um, to complete a revolution. And just so you know, the Earth revolves around the Sun in 365 and a quarter days. So we don't ignore that quarter day because eventually four of those is going to give us a full day. So that is when we have a leap year. In February 29th, we... Um, uh, every four years, we have February 29th giving us an extra day so that we make up for that quarter day that we're not counting the other three years. The Earth has four seasons, summer, spring, autumn, and winter. And these seasons are actually caused by Earth's tilt. The Earth's axis is that imaginary line that you see here. And the Earth spins on that line, causing the Earth to tilt toward and away from the Sun during different times of the year. Because the Earth's tilt is more noticeable at the North Pole that you see here in this picture, the daylight there can be seen for a full 24 hours in the summer and at night 24 hours in the winter. That is why um, we call this land of the midnight sun. The seasons depend on which side of the Earth is tilted towards the Sun. When the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, it is summer in the north and winter in the south, and vice versa. During the summer, the number of hours of daylight is greater and the number of hours of darkness is smaller. During the winter, it's just the opposite. We have longer nights and shorter days. Solstices are the longest and shortest days of the year. The summer solstice is when we have uh, the longest uh, day, and the winter solstice is when we have the shortest day. During the summer solstice, the Earth is tilted as far toward the sun as possible, so it's receiving a lot of, of, out of sunlight. During the winter solstice, the Earth is tilted as far away from the sun as possible, receiving less sunlight, making it a shorter day. During the equinox, there are equal amounts of daylight hours as nighttime hours. So here's what happens in a nutshell um, as far as seasons are concerned. When the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, we have summer in the north because they're getting more sunlight on the northern hemisphere. When it makes its revolution around the sun, now the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun and that means that we have more sunlight in the southern hemisphere and they're going to have summer and we have winter. 
The seasons are a result of the tilt of the Earth's axis. I know it's a repeat, but I, it's very important that you know that because a lot of Americans, even people who have graduated from Harvard, think that uh, something else causes seasons. So make sure that you know that tilt is the reason that Earth's seasons occur. Here is a diagram of that revolution around the sun, and you can see um, how the sun lights up certain parts of the earth, right? Um, and so as it's moving along, we'll start in January, and then this is, of course, in winter for us in the northern hemisphere, but it's summer in the southern hemisphere. And then it starts moving along this way, and eventually we have, um, we have it here where we get spring. And it starts moving along this way. By the time we get to June, it's already summer. And eventually, we're at fall where we should be right now. Okay. And that concludes the video lecture. Um, remember that if you have any questions, to write them down. And we will go over them as soon as the video is over. And I apologize for this being like really elementary. Um, but it's just the basics that we need to review in case you forgot. So it's just a refresher. Um, but do expect the next videos to be a little more complicated than this. Um, I just wanted to do this so that we can model it in class. And you know what to expect when you have video assignments. So um, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.